Westminster. I am the overseer of LC Club, the pastor and founder of the King of Kings Baptist Ministry here in the Rockville Center of the City. And it gives me a great opportunity to present the practice of one of our worship services this morning that you might experience God that you've never experienced them before. And I am Elder Ellen Carter, the first lady of King of Kings Baptist Ministry. Here you will find out that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we believe we are wishing in God in spirit and in truth. I pray that as you view this video, that you will be able to experience God as if you've never experienced it before. So come on, go with me into one of our worship services and see what God has in store for you. Let us go now.
Good morning, church. Good morning. I want you to turn to one of my favorite songs, Psalm 24. When she asked me to read scripture, I just kept hearing the earth is the Lord. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He hath clean hands and a pure heart. Who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully? He shall receive the blessing of the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, say thou. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Say
transition and transition into new leadership, Lord God. I pray for Bishop Morton, Lord God, in the tears of leadership, Lord God. I pray for all of those, Lord God, who will have a, a, a place and move in the fellowship forward after this transition, Lord God. God, we all take it for granted. The opportunity that we have to come before you, Lord God. It was a time we could not stand before you, Lord God. But you made it possible for you to back me back in. And don't forget the music ministry, Lord God. Oh God, have your way. The word came forth, and then shall be amazed, Lord God. Amaze us, Lord God, with a fresh move, Lord God. Amaze us, Lord God, by taking us to a higher level of praise, Lord God. Amaze us, Lord God.
the subject is, surely we are not blind, are we? Surely we are not blind, are we? As the passage opened, Jesus was passing by and he saw a blind man that was born blind. Isn't it awesome that our God passes by? And when he passes by, he sees you. This man had been blind since birth. And the people in the community all looked at him, but they never saw him. He was blind, born that way. Day after day, he sat and begged. They looked. They walked by, but they never saw him. He had never seen their faces until the day he was healed. He had never seen his own face, his parents' face, the sunrise, the stars, his home, not a smile until that day. Before today, it was as if he didn't even exist. He was a light waiting to be born. A light waiting to shine. A word waiting to be spoken. Today, he became a new creature. He was enlightened and he became a living testimony to the Son of Man. But they still don't see him. For some reason, they are not unable to see him. The disciples look at him and see a theological question. Grandma, who sent this man or his parents that he was born blind? Their vision is distorted by the popular belief that suffering is caused by sin and you get what you deserve. That theological realization is wrong. Job was a righteous man. He suffered. Daniel was a righteous man. He was thrown in the lion's den. Meshach, Shadrach, and a man were thrown in the fiery furnace. They were there. So we can't say why someone is blind. All we know is God is in the plan. Somewhere along the way. You know the scripture in Psalm 34? Many are the affliction of the righteous. But the Lord will deliver them out of the law. Two times the religious leaders called him in. Two times they inter interrogated him. Interrogated him. Two times he gives glory to God. They cannot see the problem, the man of God, that is formerly blind man now sees. Isn't it funny how they call him in to interrogate him? Yeah. Because of their own sight. They didn't want to believe that the Messiah had come. They wanted to be seen, but not Jesus. Isn't that how some of us want to be seen? But don't want anybody to see Jesus working in us. Looking at you. Look at me. I'm so great. I'm so good. My Lord, my Lord. They cannot see the new life 
the new man, the new creation that bears testimony to the man of God. Two times they turned a blind eye to this man and his God. No one, as the saying goes, is more blind than he or she who chooses not to see. They have chosen power and rules, regulations, boundaries over truth, and their eyes have grown dim. It's been that way in the church for so long till if any other thing comes in, it's wrong. We got rules and regulations. They can't change. We've been doing this a long time. We can't change. We're not looking to see if God has called change. The Pharisees have studied the law. They were bitten in the law. Could not see Jesus. Their vision was slanted. Some of us may have some bad vision too. Even this man's own parents distance themselves from him. They can talk about their blind son, but not about their seeing son. To see him, the enlightened son, meant that they would have to tell the story. Because see, the Pharisees called the parents in. They said, we don't know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. They deny what is right before their eyes. If your child can finally see him in blind since birth, and somebody give them sight, wouldn't you be jumping up and down? Wouldn't you be telling that person, you did a marvelous, marvelous, wonderful thing for my child? Wouldn't you want to tell everybody who did it? Fear does that. Fear keeps us from seeing a large reality. So we live with tunnel vision only, seeing the one thing that we most fear. They all looked, but none saw him. If they saw him, they would have to confront their own blindness. This man, blind from birth, is not just a single individual. He is every man and woman. The only difference between him and all the others in today's gospel is that he knows he's blind. Until we know we are blind, we can never see with new eyes. Sure, are we not blind? Are we? Sure, we are not blind. Blindness is not about the quality of our vision or the condition of our eyes. It's not about the darkness around us, but rather the darkness within us. How we see others, what we see in the world, the way we see life is less I'm black. 
black. And I'll be black till I die. Ain't no change. Born black. Go die black. I see that. Anybody else look at me and don't see it? Something wrong with your eyes.
because I knew that was not the spirit of God. And I said, Lord, my heart would be broken. And I'm selfish. I want it for myself. But I know who you want. And when you want in my life. And I will not turn no matter what. So if you so see fit that you want to take it. Because actually he is yours. First. Then you got it. But help me. Help me to stand firm. Help me to search you out. I didn't kick my friends to the curb. I don't kick my friends to the curb for nobody. No man. No woman. My children, I gathered them together and I prayed with them. I prayed for my husband. I prayed for those around me that they would be able to sustain whatever we might have to go through. I came to church and I taught. Came to church and I preached. Went to the hospitals and I visited. I didn't say I will call you later and never call them back. Because my vision was on that person. Can you imagine life without them? We have convinced ourselves that our very existence in some way depends on them. No, no. The Bible calls them idols. Modern society calls them addictions. Are you addicted to that man? Are you addicted to that woman? Are you addicted to your children? Are you addicted to your car? Are you addicted to your house? Are you addicted to your clothing? Regardless, we will inevitably look for and see only that which fosters and affirms our attachment and will turn a blind eye toward anything that threatens it. Our vision becomes selective. If you ain't in my corner for that man that I love, you ain't in my corner. That includes your children. That includes your mother, your father, your grandparents. Because he's my main focus. She's my main focus. Is that God? We have probably all met someone who is so fanatical in his or her beliefs that he or she cannot see another point of view. He cannot look at any other possibility. She refuses to see other ways but her way. Not only have we met these people, too often, huh, we are.
us from seeing.
If he's a man, let him be a man. You don't need to marry no kid. You don't give your money to your kids to pay your bills. If he's just a grown man and a child brain, Thank you. 
anyone here that does not know Christ as their personal Savior? Would you please come forward? If there's anyone here that wants Christ in their life, would you please come forward? If there's anyone here that wants a personal relationship with God, would you please come forward? Give him that chance. Give him that chance. 
to your house of worship, to worship again. 